In this compositing lesson, we're going to be talking about matching the subject with that of the background. We'll look at different features that we need to look for, different criteria we need to maintain and different adjustments we need to make to blend the subject with that of the new background. So what are those criteria? What are those parameters we need to look for? Well, that's what this lesson is all about. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now let's get started with a question and I have a question for you. So I tried my best to match this subject with this new background. So if you have a look, here we have a new background. On top of that, I placed a subject and I have made a lot of adjustments to match this subject to this new background. I've created the shadows, I've added a lot of curves adjustment layers, tried to match the colors. As you can see, if I turn all of these on one by one, and by the way, let me give you a tip. If you want to turn off or turn on layers in a succession, well, you just press and hold and drag. That's it. If you want to turn off layers in succession, well, click, hold, and just keep dragging on that line. Anyway, now when I turn on all of these, you'll notice that I've tried my best to match the subject of the, to the background. Now, no matter what I do, let's go ahead and add one more curves adjustment layer. Maybe I need to brighten the top area. So I'll take a hand and click and drag up right here, just to brighten this particular area. All right. And now I want to limit it to the subject. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers. We have learned about clipping masks before. Or you can also click on this button. This also creates a clipping mask. Now we only want it on the top area. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. And if I just paint this area in white, only that area will have a little bit of the brightness. All right, that looks about right to me. But still, it's just not matching no matter what I do. Let's decrease the opacity of this one to about 60%. What is wrong here? That's my question for, to you, actually. Also, let's turn on the global effects. These are the effects that we apply both to the subject and the background. It can be a simple color lookup table or simple curves for color grading, something to bring it all together. I even did that, but still, the subject is not matching with that of the background. What is going wrong here? Can you tell me? And that actually brings us to the first criteria. And the first thing we need to look for when we are matching the subject with that of the background. And that is perspective. The perspectives should match. Coming back to our image, what is wrong here? It seems right if you look at the perspective aspect of it. However, it isn't right. Let's open up the subject group. And if I show you the subject with its original background, you will notice a discrepancy here. So here is the subject mask. If we turn that off by holding the shift key and clicking on the mask button, have a look at the perspective that is with the ground in the subject layer. It just isn't matching with the existing background. So how do we match it? How do we actually exactly measure it so that it completely matches? Well, there is a way actually. So just on the top layer, let's create a layer at the very top and let's take a brush. All right. And now we're going to take a hard round brush and this is just for indication purposes. Okay. Let's take a color for the subject. For the subject, we're going to take red as our color and try to draw lines along the lines of the ground. We are trying to draw the perspective here. We are trying to find the vanishing point here. We are also trying to find the horizontal line. So we'll start right here and hold the shift key and click to create a line. We will start right here as well. Hold the shift key. Just make sure when you click, it just is on the line. This is not on the line. So we'll try again. Click, hold the shift key click on in here. It's just about right. It might not be accurate, but that will do. Now from here, we will draw a horizontal line where it intersects. Okay. So just click and hold. And if you hold the shift key, and if you take it to the right or left, it's going to draw a straight line. So this line that you see right over here, this is the horizontal 
line and that is the line that we need to match also it would be a bonus if you can match the vanishing point as well now let's turn this layer off for a second and create a brand new layer for the background let's choose green as the color and let's figure out the vanishing point and thus the horizon of the background all we need to do is to match the horizon and the vanishing point now let's turn off the subject for a moment also you can turn off the global effects it doesn't really matter at the moment now in here this is for the background and this one was for the subject okay reminds me of sub subway anyway so if you have lines it just makes it more convenient click and make sure it's on the line there we go it looks to be and in here as well we can just click and draw now if you want to be super accurate now of course you can draw a rectangle something like this and then you can rotate it the way you like it so i can rotate it and make sure that it's perfectly on the right angle so let's put the anchor point that you see here in the corner so i'm gonna try to move that that's actually a very thin rectangle so i'm gonna move the anchor point right over here and then you can try your level best to make sure it's very accurate so we can say the horizon is about right here this line might not be accurate but it's about right there now let's take the brush it's just giving a warning that it's going to turn a life shape into a regular path yes i want to continue simply click on yes and i'm just going to merge both of these layers all right let's take the brush and draw the horizontal horizontal line of this one as well so we have both the vanishing point and the horizon of the background and the subject as well so let's turn on the subject one and we just have to bring it here that's all let's turn on the subject as well you can turn on the global effects now let's select the subject lines hold the control or command click on the subject so that the subject is selected as well and it moves with those lines press ctrl or command t and now when you bring her down here and try to match all that you will notice that it just sits perfectly now i can turn off these lines okay let's just turn on the mask of the subject by holding the shift key and clicking on the mask that we turned off and now have a look suddenly suddenly it begins to match now i think i would need to turn off this layer but have a look let me share with you the before and after now we need to make some adjustments along the mask of the hair but you get the point look at the before so this is the before and we couldn't tell what what was not matching it was just looking absurd but look at the after just that little change makes so much of a difference right now of course since we don't have time limits in this video we can definitely make the hair a little better so just above the subject i was thinking that we can create a brand new layer here is the subject right on top of that let's create a brand new layer and then we're going to take the brush we're going to take a sample of this one and just paint on the outside with a soft round brush actually or there's one more thing you can do you can choose the clone stem tool as well make sure sample is current and below Hold the alt key or the option key click to take a sample and paint this will fill up all the edges you know make it look more and more natural sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't so in those cases i'll just take the color and just start painting for some outside areas areas like this see and the the backlight here looks all right to me you can just give a little bit of paint here and that is fine maybe paint here a little bit and there you go that fixes it also if you want to add an overall noise you can do that because in the subject as you can see there is noise but in the background there is none so you can do that so if i go to the background i've already added some blur gallery to it and the advantage of adding blur gallery is that if you go there and at the bottom you would see some effects you can also add some noise to match that with that of the subject so if I increase the noise, have a look. It is just matching. So just about right there. Hit OK. And there we go. Now it's matching so much with that of the subject. And we have fixed the issue that we were facing. Look, now it's on the ground. Now it's looking much closer 
to the new background. So that is the number one thing which you need to look for. And that is perspective. Now keep in mind, it is not always possible that your perspective will fit perfectly. In cases where you have no lines on the ground or no reference point to draw those lines to create a vanishing point, well, in those cases as well, you can guess a little bit, but there are some cases where it just won't work, where the angle of the camera is just too bizarre to be able to match the perspectives. Let me share with you an extreme photo. Take a look at this photo of this adorable baby. No matter how much you try to draw the lines to create the perspective and find out the vanishing point and create the horizon, it is just not possible here. It's a completely different top angle. There is no way you can put this baby on the ground of this new background. It is just not possible. So sometimes, and this is an extreme example, but sometimes the angles are so odd that it's not possible. Also, if you look at this photo, this subject, for this subject, have a look at the ground, right? It is, it seems to be taken from an eye level, which looks all right. However, it would be very difficult to place this subject on this background because have a look here, the ground is going downwards and the perspective is a whole lot different. So it's not always possible, but this is something which is an important criteria to look for when trying to match subject with that of the background. Although it is not always possible to match, but when it's not possible to match, it just won't look right. And that's a given. And therefore, perspective is very important criteria when matching your subject to the background. Let's move on to the second criteria. So up until now, what have we learned? Number one, we need to make sure that the perspectives match when trying to bring new elements into new background. Number two, we learned how to match the perspectives. Number three, we also learned that it's not always possible. Sometimes when the angle of the camera is just bizarre and too different, it is not possible. Also, let's say you took a photo of the subject with a telephoto lens, all right? And you took a photo of the background with a wide angle lens. It is also not possible in extreme cases, all right? Now, this brings us to our second adjustment that we need to make when matching the subject with that of the background. And it is related to perspective. And that is atmospheric perspective. Now, what is atmospheric perspective, you might ask? When you look at a scenery, even outside of your window or maybe outside of your balcony, do you notice something interesting? The further away areas have lesser contrast as compared to things which are closer to you, right? When you look at a scenery, let's say the mountains and stuff, look at the ones which are very further away. They're very faded and grayish, right? But look at the ones which are closer to you. They have higher contrast. Secondly, if you look at things which are further away, they are more hazy. Look at things which are closer to you. They are more clearer. Look at things which are further away. They are less saturated. The things which are closer to you have more saturation. So these are couple atmospheric properties that you would see occurring with a distance. And that is atmospheric perspective. Make sense? There are lots of features. Actually, if you look at the science behind it, there's lots of things, but a couple things in Photoshop's world that you need to keep in mind are contrast and saturation. Let's take a look at this example. Let's give it a more dramatic background. Now we're going to sidetrack a little bit and learn a new masking technique here. We might have already covered it before, but this is actually an interesting one and needs to be repeated. So have a look at this background right here. What color is it? First of all, it is blue. Also, what other property there is in the background? It is also bright. What if you could tell Photoshop that remove everything which is bright and also blue? We can do that and also non-destructively. And the way we do that is by using blend if. Now we have the subject and at the bottom we do have a background, but we need to remove the existing background of the subject to see it. Double click on the right 
side of the subject layer. This opens up the layer styles dialog box. Now, if you just take away the bright areas of this layer of this current layer by taking the slider on the right to the left, parts of the subject also erase. But we only want the sky to erase. We want the blue sky to erase. Remember, we want to remove everything that is bright and blue, not just bright. So for that, instead of staying in the gray channel, let's go to the blue channel. Now when you try to do that, it's much cleaner. Have a look. It's just amazing. So at this point, I see that it's also removing parts of the subject. So we're going to stop right over here. And then the rest will just break up the slider by holding the Alt key or the Option key. Click the slider to break it apart and just take it apart like this. Now I understand there are little parts of the subject that just becomes hollow. We need to fix that, no problem. Just make a copy of the subject. So with the subject selected, press Ctrl or Command J. Right click on it and choose Clear Layer Style. This will remove all of the layer style properties that we had changed. So in this case, it would be blend if hold the alt key or the option key and click on the mask button. This creates a negative mask. You take the brush white as the foreground color and just paint over the areas which are gone. That's it. Just little areas which are gone. That fixes the issue. And we didn't have to spend too much time creating a mask, right? This was the best thing. So now we just have to fill up some areas instead of trying to create a very minute selection here. It's one of the easiest ways to make selections and masks in Photoshop. Now, once this is done, the background is replaced. Also, there are some areas here as well that we need to fix. So these are the areas that we need to remove. So select the subject layer and create a mask here and take black as the foreground color and just paint over those areas to remove those extras. Okay, this is gone. Now, the background perspective is all right. The clouds should be like this because the angle is at the top and it's taken from a low angle. It looks all right, but there's something that is off. You know what is off? The thing that we just talked about. Atmospheric perspective. Look at the sky. It is even more contrasty than that of the subject. As we learned, the things that are further away would have less contrast. So let's first of all work on that. So just above the background layer, we can create a contrast, brightness contrast adjustment layer and just take down the contrast like this. It helps. So here's the before, here's the after. It's a really good way to decrease the contrast. You can also do it with curves. Now, the second thing that is not matching is definitely the saturation. So if we create a hue saturation adjustment, let's just decrease it a little bit by about minus 15. Now it is beginning to match so, so much. Let's take a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. Look, now it's looking as if the sky is behind the subject. Also, if you look at the original sky, let me quickly show that to you. The background is a little blurry. So why don't we add a little bit of blur to it? So let's go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. It's up to you. This is optional. So maybe just a little bit of blur, not too much, just a little bit, about eight, or maybe let's go for 5.6. Okay. This adds a lot to the photo. If you want to create an even stronger sense of separation, you can create one more curves adjustment layer and just fade it even more. So take the leftmost point and just bring it up like this and take the rightmost point and we can bring it down just so slightly, not too much, just so a little slightly. If you want to create a stronger sense of separation, you can even desaturate it further and that too naturally by using vibrance. So let's create a vibrance adjustment layer and just take it down. And as soon as you do that, look at how natural it begins to look. So we're going to go with minus 55 and take a look at the before and after. So this is the before. Absolutely no difference at all. And this is the after. There you go. And it's up to you whether you want to blur the background or not. But I would still blur it just a little bit. I think the blur here is just too much. So maybe blur of three would work. There we go. Now if you zoom in, you'll see. Much better, isn't it? Before. 
no separation after. And that, my friend, is atmospheric perspective. The fact of the matter is that there are certain properties of the atmosphere that make us distinguish, that helps us distinguish between the things that are closer to us and the things that are further away. Apart from having two eyes, which helps us determine how far a particular thing is from us, there are some cues in the atmosphere, like contrast, like saturation, like haze, that allows us to guess the distance as to which object is further away and which object is closer to us. Now let us move on to the third thing we need to match while matching the subject with that of the background and that is simply color. Without matching the color, it just will seem out of place. And I'm going to share with you one of the easiest ways to match color in Photoshop, although there are really hundreds of ways and you can create your own way once you know the basics of how things work in Photoshop. But in this lesson, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite and easiest ways to do it. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Again, we have a background and on top of that, we have a subject. I've already masked it so that it's easier for you to get from here so that we don't waste time masking. We have already covered masking and selection before. All right. So we have the subject, we have the background not matching at all. Let's match the color and then we'll move on to the fourth thing that we need to match in the same example. Okay. So to match the color using this technique that we're talking about, let's first of all create a curves adjustment lid. All right. Now we're going to match the highlights, shadows, and the midtones of the background with that of the subject. And how do we do that? First of all, figure out what is the light source in the background. So in the background, nothing can be brighter than the light source. And the light source here is going to be definitely the sky, right? So double click on the white eyedropper right here, the one with the white or the bright tip, double click on it. This will help us select the target color and set the target color to this one. Now it's not just sampling anything. You know why? <laughs> because the mask is selected. Make sure that the symbol is selected. Adobe needs to fix this. By default, this needs to be selected. Anyway, so double click here and click on in here and take this sample. As you can see, hit OK. Now it's going to ask you a question. Do you want to save the new target colors as defaults? Now the default for the white eyedropper is absolute white. And it is asking you, do you want to change the defaults? Well, probably I don't want to change the defaults. So hit no. So the next time you work with it, it's going to be white automatically. Make sure you hit no there, unless you want to change it to a default color. Anyway, now click on an area of the subject that is the brightest. That's going to be absolute white here or the brightest. It has to be neutral. Now, I feel that this area is a good example. So I'm going to click on one of these pixels here. You can choose the sample size to three by three and let's click on that. And there you go. The highlights instantly match. Now the changes we have made here, we only want the subject to have those changes. So make sure you click on this button. So there you go. Take a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. We are getting closer. We are not there yet. We are getting closer. Now let's do it with the dark eyedropper, the black eyedropper, black point or whatever you, my friend, want to call it. So double click on it and this time choose the darkest point or choose any dark point in the background. So this seems to be a good sample, something that is prevalent. No, I don't want to save it as defaults and click the darkest point in the subject. This part of the hat I think would be a great sample. Click on that and suddenly, suddenly, my friend, take a look. Here's the before, here's the after. We're getting so much closer. Let's do the same with the midtones. Double click on it. Let's set it to the road. The road is supposed to be neutral. Hit OK and no. And I feel that this button is a good example of gray area. Click on that and it just takes it even closer. So there you have it, my friend. Now, there's one more step after it. There's one more step. So the other thing about color is that although we might get the exact same color, sometimes the saturation is just different. So to match the saturation, you can just create a vibrance adjustment layer 
and also create a clipping mask and decrease the vibrance. It just helps. But also there's one more way to do this. And it's in fact a better way because it adds a little bit color of the background in order to desaturate it a little bit. And that is with the background selected, press Ctrl or Command J and place it at the very top. Okay. So we made a copy of the background or you can just simply hold the Alt key or the Option key drag the background at the top it also makes a copy and takes it to the top now you want to limit the background just to the subject so hold the alt key or the option key and click on the line between these two now this background is limited to the subject now whatever you do here will be limited so if i change the blend mode of the background to color you will notice the colors of the background will fall onto the subject but with color there are differences in color look some areas are blue some are reddish uh, we don't want any of that so let me share with you what we are actually doing. So we are blurring it. Let's go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And now let's blur it. So you can see that that area will get blurred. We don't want any details here, only color information. Let's go for about, how about 300? Yes, hit OK. Now change the blend mode from normal to color. There we go you have the exact color of the background. But the thing is, it's absolutely desaturated. So definitely decrease the opacity to about 40 or 60 or whatever that suits you. So I'm going to go with about 40%. There you go. Let's take a look at the before and after. So here's the before, here's the after. So much more closer. So that is how we match the color. Now there's a lot of things we need to do here, but the color is matched. Now after the color is matched, how can we forget matching the lights and shadows we cannot ignore this usually sometimes when i feel the colors are too different i start with colors and then move to lights and shadows or sometimes when i feel the lights and shadows are too different i start with lights and shadows and then move to color it depends upon your image as to how you approach the steps and i would highly recommend always not to memorize the steps you are the artist and Photoshop is an artist's tool. Go how you like it. Experiment, see what works for you. As far the lights and shadows are concerned, we're going to do a very simple adjustment here. First of all, let's take a look at where the light is coming from and where can the shadow be. So in this example, we can guess that the light is coming from this direction. And somewhere in these areas, there can be shadow. So let's do a slight adjustment. Before doing that, let's darken the subject. I feel it's too bright. Now to check the luminosity, you can create a solid color adjustment layer. Choose any color which doesn't have a saturation like gray, white, black, and change the blend mode of this one to color. So that takes away all the colors and it shows us only luminosity without making some additional adjustments. So you might ask, oh, Unmesh, why didn't you just create a black and white adjustment layer? If I created a black and white adjustment layer, it would be different because the reds are rendered differently, yellows are rendered differently. We don't want to take that risk. Also, creating a hue saturation adjustment layer and simply decreasing the saturation also might be misleading in showing luminosity values as far as human perception is concerned. So let's turn this on and we're going to create another curves adjustment layer and limit it again just to the subject by simply clicking on this button and we'll just take the hand, create a point here and take this down. Zoom out, take it down. Just stop at the point where you feel it begins to match. At this point, I feel it matches, but the dark areas have gotten too dark. So let's take it up to fade it a bit according to the new background. And there you go, just by adding this, here's the before, here's the after, we have gotten much closer. Now you can turn off the check layer at the top and now have a look, here's the before, here's the after. Even more closer, right. So we are matching the lights. Now let's go with creating some highlights and shadows. So let's create a curves adjustment layer and take it up. There are tons of ways again to create highlights and shadows and click on this button to create a clipping mask select the mask press ctrl or command i now take the brush white as the foreground color you can decrease the flow to about five percent and then just start drawing some highlights over here with white you can take a soft round brush so 
See, these little highlights really bring a lot of realism to the image. The more time you spend here, the better your images are going to look. But in this case, we didn't have to add much highlights. There you go, just a little bit of highlights. Here's the before, here's the after. You can decrease the opacity according to your preference. So I'm gonna go with about 70% here. Now let's start with the shadows. We're gonna create a curse adjustment layer, bring it down like this, and also bring down the highlights as well. Select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Also create a clipping mask out of this, so click on this button. Now select the mask again, and let's try painting here with white and to bring out these areas to bring up shadows in these areas now keep in mind these areas cannot be brighter the light is coming from the right hand side so we need to paint that accordingly now the shadows look all right but they are less faded so let's go back here and just increase the fade back in just so that it matches. Now, as we add shadows, I feel that those areas need to have more color of the original background. And the way we can do that is we can make one more copy of this, press Ctrl or Command J, and place it at the top. Make sure you just create a clipping mask back of everything that was there. And for this one, this, is, this has an opacity of 40%, right? Let's increase it all the way to 100. Also limit it by holding the Alt key, the Option key, and click on the line between these two layers. Now we only want to limit it again to the shadows. So we're gonna copy this mask here. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, click and drag it, and drop it to this copy. Now have a look, the shadows are colored like the background. So here's the before, here's the after. It looks more realistic. Now also, we need to decrease the opacity here. So let's set it to about 40%. And there you have it. Now I would just take it and paint a little more in these areas a bit. Boom. Here's the before, here's the after. Matching a lot more. So let's take a look before highlights and shadows. So this is before highlights and shadows. The light is absolutely different coming from a whole different direction. And here's the after. The light is according to that of the background. Now on top of that, you can do some color grading, you can do uh, some global effects to bring it all together. In this case, I would go and create a color lookup table because that's the easiest thing to do. And add something like crisp warm and uh, let's decrease the opacity to about 30%, just a hint of it. Let's add one more color lookup table and let's go with film stock 50. This adds a little boost again, this one, let's go 30%. Now you can, add an overall noise here if you want to that's up to you i feel that this area has gotten a little too dark so i might have to go to the mask here and paint that area a little bit in black okay that fixes it let's take a look at the before and after so this is before not matching at all and this my friend is after so much more closer and even in here you can add a little bit of background blur select the background then go to filter blur gallery and let's add tilt shift blur we have learned how tilt shift works let's start the blur right here let's bring it down it's taking a little while let's start the blur right here and take it to this area and how much blur do you want to add how much do you think would be nice 15 15 is not bad the way it already is over here hit okay now if you want to add a little more noise here with the blur you can do that that's up to you but this is how basically we would match the color first and then lights and shadows so that wraps up this lesson so there are four things that you need to keep in mind while matching the subject with that of the background number one definitely perspective number two atmospheric perspective or you might correctly say it has atmospheric properties. Keep in mind the atmospheric properties like haze. Keep in mind the atmospheric properties like the further away areas have lesser saturation due to the same thing. Number three, color. And we learned a technique where we used curves and these eyedroppers. We set the eyedroppers to the colors of the highlights, midtones, and shadows of the background and simply applied that automatically to the subject. And number four, definitely lights and shadows. I hope this lesson helped you. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.